Three things I want us to, to take a look at today. One, this Lenovo laptop that Jim Fallon bought, because we always talk about, you know, something bang for the buck, change one thing, changes everything. And what may be great for one person may not be applicable to somebody else. Now, the reason we're a little bit late is because we were looking for a cable. This computer does not have an HDMI out port on it. For me, HDMI out is essential. But he has two Thunderbolt ports. So all we needed was a cable that went from Thunderbolt to HDMI. I've got all kinds of cables, but that's one cable I don't have. But what we're going to do is put a camera on that, and I also want to talk about Bella Arc Advisor as we interrogate the machine to see what we can do to it. Because whether we build a computer as a desktop, whether we buy a computer like a laptop, they all share one commonality, and that's upgradability. And another thing I want to show is uh, I've got Andrew's machine. Oh, there's Andrew. Glad you're here. I have your computer finished. Number one, we went from build uh, Windows 10 build 1703 to 1709. That got done first. And then because I had some issues with trying to get, you know, from point A to point Z, uh, long story short, your machine is cloned. But the way I had to do it, it's going to be a little different than what I had planned, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk through some of that. Now tell us how you uh, came across this and how you picked this particular model of computer. Well, I was in uh, Micro Center last summer, and uh, I was looking at, uh, I want to call it a Samsung, a very small Samsung that was really nice. And uh, Micro Center, by the way, will put a solid state drive in a computer if you buy it. And this had a 256 gig one, which I don't want a 256 gig. I wanted a one terabyte solid state drive. I was expecting it to be a 961 is what I was expecting. For the, for the make, OEM? Exactly, yeah. But I cannot make that out of these numbers. So again, what made you choose that particular computer? Uh, well, it has 16 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte solid state drive, and it's uh, Lenovo. This is my third Lenovo, and uh, it has a good keyboard. Well, the, the uh, other part of the story about uh, Micro Center last uh, summer was I was looking around that Samsung had a flimsy keyboard, and that was my complaint about that last Lenovo. It had a, uh, I, I don't know, I'd describe it as a squishy, flimsy keyboard, and this one has a solid keyboard like my first, my T-series Lenovo that I had the first one. Well, that's a mighty thin, uh, mighty thin laptop, and you wanted something it's, you could uh, travel it with. It weighs uh, three point, uh, I don't know, 3.2, 3.02 or something. Yes. You can get a lighter one, but uh, this is pretty light. So I'm going to right click on this, I'll copy this. Let's just go take a look, see what it is. Yeah, this says, according to that number, that is a Samsung 1 terabyte 960 Pro M.2. And Evo for the 961s. Okay, well, according to this, for the part number that we put in, let's see if this is still right, PM961. This is PCI Express Generation 3, which means it's an M.2 drive. And I think that's what you have. An NVMe drive. Right. What's the M2 mean? I didn't know that part. M.2. That means it fits on a little slot. That if I go back, it looks like this. Well, that's the same as the 950 series, uh, like in that one that I had built uh, a year and a half ago. That it uh, puts in the motherboard with, I want to call it, two Phillips screws. That's what your memory looks like. I'm going to Dale, see. Dale, yes, I have sir. a question on these. What's the difference between the MVME and a standard SSD, other than the form factor? Okay. Well, you've got. Uh, first of all, you've got a standard SSD. Then you've got a M.2, and then from an M.2, you go to an NVME. So one, you've got packaging. Okay. And two, you've got speed. An SSD is faster than a spinning hard drive. Right. But an M.2 is a little bit faster, pretty close, but a little bit faster than an SSD. The NVMe is the one that's extremely fast. And what's kind of the price differential between the M.2 and the M.2 MVMe? Uh, first of all, let me go back so I can answer your question. For a one terabyte 960, if he goes and buys this raw, $620. If we were buying a one terabyte SSD, 
we'd be looking at about $300. Now, because of the size of this laptop, that's what I kept telling Jim, there's not a standard SSD in here. There's no way. This is an M.2 drive. It's a stick of chewing gum. The question is, is it NVMe? And I think it is. Yes, Jim. I got to say, I think they're all that stick of chewing gum. That's one I put in that uh, one that I was billed a year and a half ago. That's a stick of chewing gum that fits onto uh, the uh, motherboard. That's an M.2. Exactly. And all M.2s have two slots, except the NVMe only has one slot. When I say slot, I mean that little notch. For that older generation, uh, you showed us that uh, quite some time ago. The standard M.2 has two notches. An M.2 NVMe has one notch. Okay. So you have an M.2 drive in there that happens to be an NVMe drive. It's the fastest you can get. But you pay a premium for it. That's right. That's right. But once you've had it, you don't ever want to go back. And, for sure. And this that we are talking about trying to describe, this is the issue that, <coughs> excuse me, that Manolo is having with his laptop when he perceives that it runs slow. It doesn't run slow. It's just it's got a slow hard drive in it. It's a spinning drive. But that's the configuration of what you have. Now, if someone wants to understand the speeds, probably the easiest place to go to and check speeds out, let's go to Amazon, because they usually have a chart up. We'll look for an M.2, NVMe. More than likely, we'll see Samsung first. My digital, we've heard about those. BPX, didn't know about that one. So I'm going to look at this 960 Evo, and it shows there's one notch down there. Usually, the one terabytes are a little bit faster. Yeah, one notch. And down here we scroll, they'll do a comparison, and I'm looking for the comparison that'll tell us the speed compared to the other drives to finish answering your question. Okay, from 540 megabytes, I'll zoom in on that, to 3,500 megabytes. So a 960 Pro. versus a 960 Evo, you've got the fastest drive in there, which is 3,500 megabytes a second. It's an M.2, they all have the same format, which is a 2280 in length. And like I said, it's a little stick of chewing gum. Both of those drives are NVMe. 3,500 megabytes versus 3,200 megabytes. Now this doesn't compare with just an M.2 drive, but it does go down because it's all compared on one brand, 550 megabytes on a standard SSD. Big difference. Big difference in price, big difference in performance. If you look at it on a uh, megabyte scale, you get more bang for the buck with what you have. So does that answer your question, Dwayne? Okay. You know, it's a question that's like some of this other stuff, we should never take it for granted. Uh, USB 3, <laughs> USB 3.1C, all that stuff. It's nice to have a chart that you can go back and look at because it's uh, from 550 megabytes to 3,500 megabytes, I mean, if you just took the 3,000 off by itself, so you doubled the performance, it's, it's not apples and apples because it's so much faster. You go from a $300 drive to the price of this drive. And this particular drive has a five-year warranty, which I'm sure that one it does too. The 960 Pro, 961, so the NVMe $620. Your drive, since it's OEM, I have found some of those drives in the past. They are hard to find, uh, but they're pretty close to the price of the retail drive, maybe $20 less. I doubt you'd find $50 less. And in some cases, when it first came out, they were the same price. Just one's retail and one's OEM. And very rarely do you see the OEM drive by itself. But when you compare that to an SSD, big difference. $300. So for, for a stick of chewing gum, we double the price, but we more than double the speed. Now, you like this because what was the first thing you were looking for? Small screen? Well, I wanted uh, to be able to uh, copy a bunch of files uh, from photography 
uh, onto this thing as backup. But you don't have a memory card slot. Well, that's right, but I now, I don't have it with me, but I have an adapter for uh, that'll uh, fit into uh, these uh, Thunderbolt? slots. Thunderbolt. Uh, SDXC to Thunderbolt, and I haven't tried it yet. Oh, uh, when you do, let us know. I will. Uh, Did I you get the one? I give you some time, and I was, uh, uh, what I'd like to do is uh, copy a full uh, a folder or a, a full disk from that to the drive, and then using the USB or the USB three ones to copy it to see the difference. And if you want to bring that up and show it again sometime, we can. That'll give me time to find the cable we're going to need to plug it in. We've got to have Thunderbolt to HDMI, um, and it's significant that you have Thunderbolt ports, and it's got the little lightning mark on the side. And showing apparently, it. they're both power. Either one of those, we could hook a monitor to one, and we could hook the network to the other one. Uh, if we want to be wired into the network, but you're strictly wireless. So it's, it's an interesting little laptop. So you were wanting something to do your photography with. Right. Uh, the downside is that there's no SDXC and it's limited, uh, limited ports. That's the, uh, the bad part. You got and one. I like the small and the light. I know you guys like the big uh, screens, but it's easier to carry this around. Well, personally for me, I like the big screen. Gil, what's the resolution on, the, on that screen, on the laptop? What's it's 4K, and I, I... I was going to say, I thought it was. Can you imagine 4K on that? Because it is so really Tiny. clear. You know, projected on the screen, it's extremely clear. I want to zoom in on oh. those ports. There we go. Okay. You're going to have to hold it still. Oh. Okay, there's, there's those two. You see the Thunderbolt mark? You can see there's a Thunderbolt mark on the side for these two ports. Lightning mark here, lightning mark here, and then back down the line is another port for the headphone jack, which would be right there. So that's the only three ports on the left side. That one port that's hard to see, you got your little light you can put on there. You see there's a light, that's the power button, but that's a USB 3, USB 3.0, if y'all can see that. Boy, does that light flicker. For an LED, I'm surprised. So there's only those two devices on that side. There's nothing else over there. The power button and that USB 3. And there's nothing across the back. Tiny, tiny. Now see, for me, two things that's missing. One, the SD card reader. He's got external. Actually, three things. There's no hardwired network, but you got those two ports. Well, I don't know if uh, you guys are interested in uh, all of this flipping and flopping uh, that uh, you know they demonstrate. Uh, Go ahead. It'll uh, turn wrong side out if uh, you want to write on it or uh, so hold it up like that. Did you get a stylus since it's a touch? Yeah, I do. Since you mentioned it, I don't have it with me, but yes, I got one. Have you used it? Uh, no. Think you will? I actually I don't know. It uh, might come in handy with Photoshop. Uh, I have a tough time making selections to uh, to kill things off, uh, like in Photoshop and stuff like that. So I might try if I can make perfect selections with that pen. I sure would. Yes. Because a lot of those guys use those Wacom uh, tablets. Yeah, like, that's it. Yeah. And the Wacom tablets are great, but they're expensive. For what you want to do and you're going to be doing photography with this, this brings up a really interesting question to me. Are you going to be shooting tethered? No. Have you, you've heard of that term? Yeah, oh, I see those guys doing it, but that's just beyond me. Uh. Well, what that, what that allows them to do is as they shoot, they immediately dump to the computer. Uh, yeah, I've seen them do it, uh, but I'm going to be doing this with wildlife uh, out, uh, you know, in adverse circumstances and so I'm not going to be able to shoot tethered it'll be just exactly. you and the camera the the computer comes in with coming back at night and backing up all my files onto this okay the processor is an a, is a uh, i7 8550u uh, which I think is the processor to be with shows the board serial number unified EFI BIOS show you at Windows 10 home 1703 and you've got 16 gigs of RAM, two slots. I notice you've got Intel graphics on there. It does what you want, though, and that's all that matters. Let's see if I can move that just a little bit. I was looking for that. Uh, it is a HD or UHD, but I can't find the, uh, the numbers I was looking for. 
but it is 4K, so. That's right, yeah, that's right. And it's important to know that on a small screen like this because as long as he uses a Windows solution to clone image or backup this, he'll be fine. If he were to try to use CloneZilla on this, that could be a problem because it's gonna go to a command line and it's gonna see that 4K display and it's gonna give you a font. When we were on Mel Babb's machine, we could barely see. Oh, yeah. On yours, I don't even think we could see it with a magnifying glass. <sighs> So I'm hoping that something CloneZilla at some point will become aware of and, and change. Now, because this is a laptop, have you run Macrium on it to image the drive? No, I haven't. Okay, so the first thing will be to do to image the drive. The second thing will be to do to, is create the recovery disk so that you can make sure you can access the image when you need to. So you'll want to have two memory sticks, one for the recovery drive to give you access, and the other one that's going to have the image on it. I would clone the desktop, but I wouldn't clone the laptop. Because it's more difficult to take the drive out of here, I would image it. Because image it. the okay. image is easier to get access to. So you're going to have one memory stick, which I would put on the USB 3 port to create your recovery drive. And the recovery drive purpose is to access the image. So you can put that image on whatever kind of drive you want externally. It could be a regular spinning drive, it could be an SSD or it could be another M.2 drive in its own separate little box. What you'll want to do is image the drive. So as we talked about last week, a USB 3 thumb drive on this right side, and then on the Thunderbolt side, anything you want. When you get ready to image this, what are you going to image to? Haven't gotten that far? No, I haven't. Uh, Think about it. Right. Now, on Andrew's machine, I've been able to get it cloned. It took me one hour to clone it. So Andrew, if you wanted to wipe the drive, We've got it on that separate drive, that separate drive you had, and I'm going to go through that in a few minutes. Uh, is there anything else in here that we should take a look at on this computer? It's a Lenovo, and the model is a 920. It's got a 4K display, 16 gigs of RAM, and it's got an i7-8550U processor, which I think is a great place to be because you've got four cores, eight threads, and for what you want to do, it should be fine, but as we all know, Photoshop likes all the resources you can throw at it. And you've got a one terabyte NVMe drive, so if you hook up an external display, um, hook up an external mouse, keyboard's not bad. I'm amazed they got all that in there, though. No, I like that keyboard. It's too small, but at least uh, somehow or other, I like the kind that's solid. You're missing the numeric keyboard on the right. That would be the I knew, I was going to make a joke about Joe, I know he has to have a uh, The numeric? Yeah, right. Takes up more space for you to travel on a plane, that'll do what you want. Question on, uh, how, does he get any, any fan noise off of that None. machine? None, I, I can't hear any noise at all. Of course I'm deaf, but uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that might make a difference, I don't hear anything. Okay, do you mind telling us how much you paid for it? 2000 plus and uh, well uh, that drive uh, that was kind of a long story uh, last uh, I guess it was last Wednesday when I would have been here was when I started uh, well no it was the week before yes uh, I attempted to order after I got home went two Wednesdays ago and I got down to asking them what hard drive was in this thing and they wouldn't tell me. They gave me a run around about, uh, well, we put some different brands of hard drives in all of them. The review units for these things are the, uh, the ones with the 250 gig solid state drives. And then made me uh, think, uh, whoa, that'd be a burn to uh, get that thing home and to come to find out is some, uh, you know, no name uh, solid state drive. And uh, so I went to Best Buy and that took me a day and uh, the, uh, the, the Best Buy has 512 gig uh, drives in them. And I wanted a one terabyte, and they said, well, we'll order it, and so on and so forth. But the one at Best Buy also had a Samsung drive, and I said, well, I'll gamble. But that gamble may have cost me $100, because there was one of those uh, sales on, and uh, the price actually had gone back up. But then when I was talking with the lady over the phone, she said she was going to give me a 5% discount or something like that, so uh, I, I'm going to have to wait on my American Express bill to come in because I also bought a three-year warranty and a accident uh, warranty also. Uh, 
so we're talking about probably $2,300. So you ordered this direct from Lenovo? That's right. And so far they treated you like you wanted? Say it again? They treated you like you wanted? No. In other words, it irritated me that they wouldn't tell me. Uh, in other words, I think the answer is that there are different varieties of the Lenovo. You know, they have high-end ones and then they have low-end ones, and I think the answer is that that salesman was uninformed and that those low-end ones, they really do sell, put no-name solid-state drives in. But I think the high-end of their brand, they would not put anything like that in the machine. But I don't know that for a fact. It's just that it, when the, they put the review units out there, the review units had the Samsung drive. I want to call it Laptop Magazine. Yes. And I don't remember the name of the other. There's one or two other magazines besides Laptop, and they all listed a Samsung solid-state drive in them. I think they did it on purpose. But they wouldn't tell me over the phone for sure. Sure. I think so that's why I was kind of hesitant to talk too much because I was probably going to send this thing back if uh, you didn't get what you wanted exactly well, although i will say i'm probably going to send that mouse back uh, that's a funky looking it, mouse it's, uh, it is i assumed it was gonna uh, you know flatten out no, i can't but send it, it back at that rate it doesn't uh, doesn't flatten it's out. supposed to be cordless it was plugged in all last night and uh it's, it's dead again uh, i and i can't think of anything else to punch except by that so uh, I had it working last night, plugged in. But How much was that mouse? Uh, I think it was thirty-five dollars. Interesting. Thirty-five dollars too much. Right. But if it doesn't work, I agree. Get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, for thirty-five dollars, it ought to work. I agree. You know, you would think. You you have to know your specs, and it's good to know what you're looking at. And like Jim, he knew what he wanted, and he held their feet to the fire. <laughs> now he had to pay for it, but he held their feet to the fire to get what he asked for, and that's. That's part of it, knowing your specs. John, did you have a comment? Yeah, the, I was commenting about the USB ports on that. The, uh, it's got two USB, what, the C, no, U, yeah, USB C ports, and one regular USB 3 port. So, for the most part, practical purposes, he only has one usable USB port because he probably has nothing to plug in to the 3.1 port. So, my question was a useful accessory might be some kind of a hub that allows you to pl plug two USB items into that computer. Cal Digit made a USB C docking station that I mentioned to Nick Streeter quite some time ago. Cal Digit USB C docking station, new firmware, supports MacBook, MacBook, HDMI display port, LAN, audio mic, Thunderbolt 3 compatible, half a meter cable, tiny little cable. That's expensive. Yes, it is. And you can see the ports that are on it. Headphones, microphone, a USB 3 port. Then on the other end, power, link to the computer. Then a standard USB 3.1C port. I'd be more inclined to shop for something that costs $20 rather than $120. <laughs> I agree, but remember back when we were originally doing this, we were uh, looking for some way to connect because the Asus Zen 4K laptop had a dongle that came with it. And that dongle gave you internet access. Lou had one, she's misplaced hers. That's why we have this other one we're using. Nick Streeter has one. I've looked trying to find that separate part from Asus. At that time, a year ago, I guess it's been nearly a year ago, you couldn't buy that separately. So if you lost that and you wanted wired internet access, you had to figure some way to get back in and this was one of the only devices at that time. Now, are there others available? There probably are. I have not looked um, because Thunderbolt and USB 3.1C are not the same. They're different. They use the same port, but it's extremely frustrating. Now, on this laptop, as you noticed, it's got the marks. The marks signify Thunderbolt. So you want to hook up a Thunderbolt 3 device to it to get access to these other ports. If he had this, we'd had that up on screen. So what I've got to do is find a cable. A cable like I need is probably going to run, I'm thinking, around 20 bucks. But it's only going to do one thing. Ben, you got a comment? Is Thunderbolt going to replace USB? That's hard to say. Uh, Thunderbolt, or the USB 3.1C, is supposed to be the one that replaces everything else. But uh, 
there's more confusion than there is uh, acceptance. Yeah, than acceptance. Well put. Sure, it would be nice if all you had was four or six Thunderbolt ports all around and they all would do everything. If they would all do everything. You know, remember <laughs> I said, I've got some cables. I've got $100 worth of cables for Thunderbolt 2, Thunderbolt 3 to connect stuff with. But the one thing I needed today to plug in his laptop, I didn't have. I've got a Thunderbolt 2 to get me to Thunderbolt 3 so I can get out of a computer into the device uh, and vice versa. And I've used an external device where I've showed y'all on this laptop, USB 3.1C. You've got to look at the cables just because the connector may be the same. Uh, They're not going to perform the same. And I think it's extremely confusing. And again, this laptop has those marks signifying that those are Thunderbolt. Now, I've got a USB 3.1C port on this HP Envy 17T, but it's USB 3.1C. It's not Thunderbolt. If it were Thunderbolt, it would tell me. So I think it's extremely confusing. And for what Jim has, you know, from my perspective, this doesn't meet my needs, but my needs are different than his. And for us to put this up on the screen, we need a cable to get out of that Thunderbolt into HDMI. If you look at the edge of the drive, the Thunderbolt marking, it shows a little thunder, Thunderbolt. Maybe they didn't put it on. Okay. What yeah, that means, it's, yeah, a, th it's a Thunderbolt port. Thunderbolt. It's not just a USB USB-C. port. But Those are Thunderbolt ports. That, okay, but no, they're... I mean, faster. It, yes, faster. Is. That's okay. your... That's your, I think that's, there is the Thunderbolt marking here, yeah. It's if it's got the Thunderbolt mark on it, then it's a Thunderbolt port. It's got the lightning mark. I didn't, does that mean Thunderbolt? Or yes, it just that means, means Thunderbolt. it's powered. So now here we have these Thunderbolt ports. And, and I, again, I'll just say I think it's extremely confusing. You've got a Thunderbolt 3 port, but as Dwayne said, you've got Thunderbolt 2 speed. I don't know what uh, is on this Lenovo. I, I, I think Dell's euphemism was exclusive Dell Thunderbolt technology or something to that effect. <laughs> before we had the Threadripper, before we had the Ryzen, AMD was pushing their uh, FX chips. We had a chance to upgrade the motherboards with some newer technology we talked about at the time. And that gave us USB 3.1C. You had the port on the motherboard, but you didn't have the speed. It was the same issue. So you, you've, got to, you've got to check all that stuff. And if a lot of people think, oh, I've got Thunderbolt 3 and they connect, they're not getting speed, the first thing they may think, there may be something wrong with the cable. Because to get Thunderbolt 3 speeds, you've got to keep that cable short. But the second issue is, even if you've got the short cable to keep it in spec, will the chipset perform at that speed? And I don't see how they think they're going to nail this down, because this stuff keeps changing. So here we still have Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt 2, Thunderbolt 3, and I've got a device here in the rack that's fairly new that's Thunderbolt 2. And I had to spend $100 for a converter cable plus a regular cable so that I could use Thunderbolt 3 out of a laptop or out of a computer to get Thunderbolt 2 access. Now, all I've done is created connectivity because I've already dictated what the speed's going to be, and I know that in advance. But using that port is still faster than pulling it out going through SATA. And that was something I had a problem with on uh, Andrew's machine. Andrew's machine, that desktop PC is an HP Pavilion. We put in a new power supply, what, about six or eight months ago? Do you remember? Roughly? It's been a while. Anyway, at the time, I was looking at that, thinking, you know, what we might upgrade. And at that time, I was thinking the next thing might be video card, might be RAM. And then here we are six or eight months later, and... Power supply is running great. We've upgraded Windows, but I was looking at how do we connect that hard drive. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the back of this computer. It's significant what's on the back. Now, this is a ready-built computer, and the purpose of this last upgrade we've just made, three things. One, Windows, we've upgraded that, but I'm going to show you the ports on the back of this case. This is a ready-built computer. There's four slots there. And those four slots, slot one and two is taken up by a video card. Slot three, I needed the space for this device in slot four. If I needed that slot to get access to a single lane card, I'd have to change a cable in here to make that work. Right now it's a blank, but there's a cable in the way that's almost touching the video card. So four slots, three devices, this thing's maxed out. 
Now, what's the purpose of this little device down here? Okay, let's look at the ports on the back of this case. I'm going to pan over here just a little bit to the left. And as I look at these ports, I go to USB, there's the optical out, there was the old video, which was DVI and VGA, and then I've got one, two, one, two USB ports, a 1394 Firewire port that you never did use, did you? No, I've never been used. Yeah, and then I've got two more USB ports and then an Ethernet port. Now, on a desktop, typically these are color-coded. So two of those should be blue if they were USB 3, and they are not. Those are all USB 2 ports. And then I go to my last ports, which are my audio. I can get 5.1 channel sound. So I'm going to spin this around and show you the front of it. You notice there's no USB 3 on this. Forget the other because it didn't exist nine years ago. So I'm going to turn this around look at the front of the case. I have some more ports, and they are right here. And I'm going to spin this over and show you. And those two ports right there are also USB 2. And on the front, I've got audio and headphones. Whenever I'm going to clone a drive, clone image or backup, the desktop I want to clone, the laptop I want to image, because it's easy to change out a hard drive on a desktop. If I want to clone this drive, I want the fastest port possible. There's only USB 2. There's no USB 3. So I've got to do an add-in card. So I said, hmm. So I pulled the lid off, looked inside, and there were four places you could plug in another hard drive. I need two of those. So what I did was I put an add-in card, not to go with USB 3, but to give me eSATA down here. So to get eSATA, I had to have a power tap. Power supply had plenty. And I also had to uh, connect one uh, USB port to it. And I had no idea what I'd have when I got into it. I had that. So that's just a card with power, two data cables, and another power cable all plugged into that. And the purpose of that is to give me access to eSATA. So I've got eSATA with power, which brings me to the next device. And I'm going to zoom out and show you this other device. This is from Anchor. This is one of those docking stations we've talked about. But this docking station is kind of special because it's eSATA to SATA. Anchor makes this hard drive docking station. And what I like about this, shadows. Can you see it okay? Yeah, that's better. Okay. This is Anchor hard drive docking station. It'll do USB 3, but it also does. ESATA. So I've got a power supply, I've got an ESATA cable, and I've got a docking station. So this has to be sitting out. This plugs in with power, and I've got USB 3, which I wouldn't use, and I've got ESATA because I've put it in the case. And I can plug it in the top, either a two and a half inch or I could flip that door down and a three and a half inch will work. So I wanted an internal solution, but to do an internal SATA, I would have had to have modified the case. And I wanted to put in one of these rack solutions, but I didn't have room to do something like this. To use this, you've got to have full access, full access for this to slide out, the full access top and bottom to put that in a case. So I'm gonna spin this back around again. And I'm going to show you the front of the case. I'm going to spin this around so the camera can see it and you can see it from there. This case has an expansion bay. But if you'll notice, it's got a burner in the top with a door. This burner in the top with this door barely lets the disc come out. For example, if I needed to uh, pop that drive out and access the little pin, where you stick a paper clip in to push that door out, I can't barely get to it, and I'm not sure I can get to it straight. So here I have a second bay that I could use, but it's for the same thing. It will not give me access because it would not accommodate a removable rack. I could modify the front of the case, but I might end up messing up the faceplate. So I opted 
for this device to go in the back. I can plug that in. And that'll give me what I want. So that's what I did. And it took me one hour to clone that machine. So what I have to do, and this may be awkward for you, Andrew. This was not my first choice, but this was the best choice I had. I pull this drive out. This is a one terabyte drive. See where my pins are. Pop that drive in. Locks in. Plug in my power cable, plug in my data cable, and then there's a power button I turn on. And I can clone with Macrium Reflect from that device. The disadvantage is that hard drive is going to be external. But it was the best solution I could come up with. It took me an hour to clone it. This is what I wanted to do, but I had no way to get this in without modifying that. And I'd had to cut the faceplate. And even then, I don't know if it would have worked. So when you buy a computer versus building a computer, those are some of the little idiosyncrasies you just you don't think about until you get ready to do it. How are we going to clone it? And yes, I could have put the drive inside the machine, but then how do you disconnect it when you're not using it? It would be nice if it was all self-contained, but this has a cable that's long enough that I can set this on top or beside it. And I've tested it and it works. Took me a little longer for parts, took me a little longer to uh, get it installed, but uh, it works, and that's what matters. So now you have a clone desktop. Now, when you get ready to do something else to that machine, you can keep that docking station. Use it on any other computer, but you'll have to pull that eSATA out and put that on another case. Because if you'll notice, your old video on this case, you've got, now got a new video card. So we'll go back down here and show that again. So instead of using the video right here, display port, HDMI, or DVI. So here you had DVI and VGA. Do you know how you've been hooking up the monitor so far? Was it VGA? Well, I have some HDMI cable at home. Oh, you do? Okay. Well, then you're in business. I like the real thin HDMI cables because, first of all, I don't like HDMI because it's fragile. But if you use one of those smaller cables, you're less likely to mess up the connection. And if the monitor can also do HDMI, then you're, you're set. So anyway, that's what you're going to have. You've got a new video card, and you went from a 256 megabyte video card to a 1 gig. I wanted to put in more, but there was a little bit of a problem with space in that case, getting a bigger card in to accommodate, uh, considering that's nine years old. But it works right now. Everything works. So I hope you're going to like it. Hey, very good, officer. I will. I wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, Bella Arc Advisor. Okay, you've run Bella Arc Advisor on your machine, so we know those specs. Right. Have you run anything like the Crucial uh, program? No, or I, I've been uh, leery on You have not checked to see if there's any other upgrades you can do to the hardware? None. Yeah. Uh, when you get a chance, go to Crucial and let them interrogate it and see. This laptop may be too new for them to interrogate and find out. This, this HP MV17T, when I interrogated it, they couldn't tell me anything about it. Have you guys ever run this tool from Crucial? Y'all know the one I'm talking about? We haven't done this in a long time. Right. OK, I'm going to go to Crucial's website. And right here, on the right side, see where it says Advisor Tool? You can do a system scan, advisor tool, either way. The advisor tool you have to go through and select. But as soon as this comes back up, once it clears, if we run the other tool, we'll download the scanner, agree to the terms, crucial scan. Now, I've run it on this computer before. It didn't find anything. But I'll run it again. I'll get the little thing that'll pop up that says, you want to give this access? I'm going to say yes. Yep. 
Do you want to allow this app to make changes to your device? User account control. Now, the last time I ran this, it failed. It wouldn't find anything. Scroll down, right here. There Crucial okay. system scanner. All right. All right. Put a check mark under agree, and then download the tool. When I originally ran this, it didn't show up. Now it does. Compatible memory, compatible solid state drive. So I could put in 16 gigs, and it shows I have two slots, eight and eight. Now the processor will support 32. This says this will take an M.2. If I were to open this, I can change out the memory. When we're looking at a computer and we're talking about upgradability, if it's got 16 gigs, you could usually upgrade to 32. Those are so dims. Question. Yes, sir. The scan results on my system here, and it says it'll 32 gig capable system. And uh, nicely enough, it's got one 16 gig stick in it. The other one's empty. But Crucial doesn't show any 16 gig for it. Does that mean Crucial doesn't make 16 gigs, or they just don't have a compatible one? I'd have to go back through and look. They should be able to uh, come up with 16 gig sticks. You didn't, they listed like 12 different so-called upgrades for it here, and they're, uh, they're all from 2 gig to 8 gig. We noticed there's a button there that says view more compatible memory upgrades. Yeah, I, I expanded it all the way down. And did it show anything? Just show, shows an 8 gig kit of 2 is the best they got. Now for this one it shows two 16 gig sticks. And it says it'll work on this machine. <clears throat> so that's what I would expect, that I could upgrade from 16 gigs to 32. This is DDR4. Yours is what, 3 or 4? Four? 4. Four. DDR4. It's always a good idea to look, and that's why I like to run the Crucial tool. Kingston also has a tool that may or may not work, and those are the two we always go with. Now this says out of stock right now. I could take this part number and I could check around and see if somebody else has it. The only reason I'm showing this is because this is something I want to know. It, it's part of the, okay, I'm looking at a computer I want to buy, and I'm kind of like Manolo's spot. I'm going to spend $800 for a laptop. If I spend another $300, that's an $1,100 laptop. It would be better to buy what he wants now than later. But if he's going to wait, my suggestion is always at that six-month interval. Doing these kind of upgrades is a good time when you do a clean install of Windows. So if you've got a hard drive, you want to upgrade. If you've got RAM, you want to upgrade. Uh, used to, you could might be able to upgrade the uh, wireless card in there. And back at one time when Dell specifically let you pick all the components you wanted to put in a the computer, they quit doing that. Uh, configurations are a lot more limited now. So the two things we can upgrade is one the hard drive and two the memory. The question is, do you need to, do you want to? Now this has a spinning drive. I've got a one terabyte. You've got, I've got this, not the slowest, but I've got a spinning hard drive in here. You've got not only an M.2 stick of chewing gum, but an NVMe drive. I can put an M.2 in here, but I could not put an NVMe. And there are some models that will support it. But I wanted to show this because it's good to know Thank you. And it said I'm not uh, listed yet. Uh, we're sorry. Let's let's put that up on screen. That would be uh, camera Yoga 920, 13 IKB. And what you're seeing now is what I saw. Let me see if I can get a little closer on your shoulder. We're sorry. Crucial currently does not have any compatible upgrades available for your particular system. At least you got an answer. When I ran it on this uh, HP, I didn't get that much information. Yoga 920, 13 IKB. No upgrades right now. The only thing you would be able to upgrade, if anything, would be the memory. And I don't see the point in it. Right. That's why... 16 gigs and one I think, terabyte, that ought to be enough. I for, agree. I think you six, know, six months or a year at least. Yes. 16 gigs for the uh, memory and uh, one terabyte hard drive is good. If you need more, you've got access to Thunderbolt 3. If you're doing that kind of stuff, then uh, I want to see that rate array when you build it. 
So, so we looked at uh, th three things. One, this laptop. Two, the Bell Arc Advisor. And three, we've looked at uh, this desktop. And the thread that binds all these is look at your specs, know what you're looking for, look and see what kind of upgrades are possible for the machine you have, and then you can decide if that's really the machine you want. And we were able to show this eSATA to SATA solution that works. And you know, eSATA was a big deal a few years ago. I'm glad I could still get that to work in your computer. Otherwise, we'd have had to go to an I.O. card to do something different. And to me, this made the most sense bang for the buck. Two different connections. You can use USB 3 or eSATA, but not both, either one. And the eSATA is much faster. So we're going to do a drawing. Those of you online, we're going to do this drawing. If you're here at the meeting, one man's junk is another man's treasure. I want to thank everybody for joining us. So we're going to sign off, and then we're going to do our drawing. Thanks for joining us. We'll look forward to seeing you next week. Y'all have a great day. Signing off, folks.